Welcome to 31 Days of Spinal Muscular Atrophy for SMA Awareness Month, which is every August, every year. Most of why this video exists is at the bit where I'm spamming washi tape everywhere. I'll timestamp it. I've sped up a lot of the bits because time, but if you need to, you can definitely slow it down. We have to start somewhere, and that somewhere is me folding an A4 sheet to half to find the midline. If you don't want to fold, you can always just measure and mark. I am lazy to math. I'm using a rotary trimmer to cut the A4 stacks into A5 stacks. You can use a knife or a pair of scissors, whichever makes your life easier. Making the little book sets called signatures is all about stacking and folding paper. Again, and again, and again. Do this as much as you want. Just make sure you have a big enough piece of envelope to encompass your entire stack. I've made four signatures with seven pieces of A5 each, making a total of 28 pages per signature. Here, you should use any leftover envelope you have. Make sure it's big enough to contain all the signatures you've meticulously compiled. It can be ones with plastic windows, whatever you have. Or you can Frankenstein them together to make a mega envelope cover. Choice is yours. We're going to decide in which direction you want the cut to be made. Here, I've decided that I'll be cutting it into A5s, just like the signatures, so that it all sits well together. This is your project, so you can do it however you want. I've been folding these pieces into half again. I'm actually trying to find the center so that I can make some kind of spine so that I can fit all my four signatures inside without it looking kind of weird. You can see that I've taken maybe about one centimeters in total. I'm using my ruler as a pseudo bone folder, also my nail, to make sure it's nice and straight. I do the same for the other side. And just like that, you have a perfectly good 1cm thick spine. Wonderful. I'm folding it and folding it and folding it using my nail to flatten it because I don't have a bone folder. You don't need to buy so many things if you want to do stuff. Honestly, it's... Look. It fits. Isn't it lovely? It's at this point I realize that yeah, I'm going to have to do the same thing for the other sheet, otherwise it's not going to match. So what I do is I layer one on top of the other, preferably the one that I have already done, so that I can find the, the, the creased point. After a bit of finagling with my nail, I realized that wasn't such a good idea. I should probably use something else like a pen. And so I mark on both sides to make sure with two points you can make a straight line. I'm smart, you see. Just not smart enough to have done it in the first place. Trial and error will teach you a lot of things in life. Here I go, again, doing the same thing, making sure it's all straight, using my nail to flatten things. Gotta make sure it's properly straight. Can't have some chicanery where it is just all over the place. Anyway, once you've cut it into half, you'll have two pieces which you'll layer on top of one another to create rigidity and structure. And pockets, because there's so much flappy sides to envelopes. Pockets are good. Pockets are always good. Use your glue of choice to stick them together. I just use water-based glue and a glue stick. Just don't use too much in case the paper warps, especially if you're using water-based glue. Leave it to dry. If you want it to dry flat, put it under something heavy and flat and you'll get them nice and unwrinkled. I 
after you're done with the gluing and drying and your paper is, as you've decided, unwrinkled, we can move on to the next part. Measure the spine and divide it by the number of signatures you have made. Again, I remind you I've made four for myself. The lines doesn't have to be perfect, just as equal as you can get them. You can sort of see it in the video. I, I didn't actually show you this, but I thought it should be mentioned anyway. After you're satisfied with the lines, mark three points on it for the saddle stitch binding later. At the same time, make sure you take your signatures and mark those same points on the spine of the signatures for the binding again later. Take whatever needle or pointy object to poke the points that you've marked out earlier for the saddle stitch. You can see me also making the hole wider by just wiggling the needle around so it'll be easier for me to thread later. This is up to you. I needed to do this for myself, but you can leave it if you feel like it. Or you can also completely erase the pencil lines that you've drawn. Erase it. Erase it like disability is erased from the media. The lines don't matter now. They've already done their job. Now that you're done erasing the lines, we move on to the saddle stitch binding, which I consider the fun part. Make sure you found a suitable bit of thread. Bought or found, it doesn't matter. I'm using some leftover cross-stitching thread I've saved from once upon a crafting time myself, as well as a needle that you feel comfortable using. Please don't stab yourself as there is nothing more uncomfortable than having to sew things with a plaster on. Be careful. What I'm doing is poking the threaded needle into the widening holes of the signature and cover. I start with going through the inside of the middle hole to the outside, then going down and coming up through the bottom hole, going up and out through the topmost hole, and then back again through the middle hole from the outside to the inside. Remember, you're trying to also bind the signatures to the cover. When you're moving back through the middle hole, make sure the needle does not go through the existing thread. This is very important. Please be very careful to make it exit on the other side of where the starting thread is and then tie a knot with the tail of each end of the thread on the spine so that it remains secure. Make a few knots just in case it feels like unraveling anytime soon. Just like our feelings when we are slighted beyond belief by a passerby who thinks our lives or equipment are optional and for fun. They say measure twice, cut once. But for this junk journal, measure once and throw caution to the wind, which is something we can't usually do as a person with spinal muscular atrophy because there's so many things that can go wrong. Call it a way we control the uncontrollable chaos that is our lives. Become ungovernable. I've made maybe a few mistakes, mostly because of the unmeasured way ungovernable, remember, that I have made the holes. Yes, they fit. It's fine. They match. But I had forgotten that if you flip the signatures around and don't check, you will get one lopsided bound signature that has no reason being there other than to be cut out and redone. I redid the binding twice, annoyed at my own mistake and having to blame nobody else but myself. I often take these things as a learning experience. Yes, even junk journals can teach you a few things about patience and the pursuit of perfection, which doesn't exist. Speaking of perfection, though, look at these pretty lines you've sewed and congratulate yourself for a job well done. Ah, it's so hard. Why do I even do this to myself? The amount of strength needed is insurmountable. Cut. It takes a while for me to realize that just pushing to cut is miles easier than pulling to cut because physics shamed. Cut, cut, 
cut, cut, cut, cut. Behold, I doth maketh an insert. It is an omni-capable insert. Versatile, unassuming, multidisciplinary, just like people with spinal muscular atrophy. This insert is very adaptable. A bookmark, to-do sheet, measuring rule, why not all of the above? The only thing that limits you is your imagination. Now that we're done with the basic shape, of the junk journal, it's time to decorate. I have pre-selected some washi tape to adorn this current plain journal with, and instead of walking you through the boring details, I will simply let you know that you should do whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy and is aesthetically pleasing to you. But I do have to stress that depending on how your journal is, you may or may not have to reinforce some of the areas so that it can last longer and not tear. Paper is fragile after all, and we must do all we can to protect it. You'll also see me going over creases, sides, and corners a few times to do just that. The idea of making a junk journal, spinal muscular atrophy medical book, came to me as I was browsing through smacare.org. Just saying that all the stuff on the website is actually super helpful, and if you have spinal muscular atrophy, is a carer for someone with SMA, knows of someone with SMA, or are just curious about the disease and want to understand it better for the future, this is the place to go. Aside from the Persat One We Care Journeys Facebook page, I'll be linking all the relevant sites in the doobly doo below. One of the many useful tools is the My SMA Diary. It's a diary specifically for new parents of children with SMA and should be used alongside their healthcare providers when filling out vital information during hospital visits and follow ups. The book is in two parts. The first part is a bunch of very important information about spinal muscular atrophy, and the second part is a record of medical information and assessment tools for the child. The SMA diary is in English, but a Bahasa Malaysia translation is available for the first part of the book. This is great if you're a new parent of a child with SMA, but I am not a new parent of a child with SMA. I am an adult with spinal muscular atrophy and know a fair bit about the disease already, but I am always open to learning more. There's always gaps in human knowledge and I am not exempt from it. The more you know, the less you know you know. You know? What's the opposite of the Dunning-Kruger effect? Right. As I was saying, I made this book because aside from the My SMA Diary existing, I had a chat with a medical professional who I will not name and had advised me that we adults should keep records of all our visits in an easy to access place so that we may share it with all our doctors and specialists in whichever hospital they may be at. You know, because we have to go to so many hospitals. Malaysian hospitals, for some reason, are very strange when it comes to patients viewing their own medical records. I had mine taken away from me while I was trying to read it. I personally don't know what they're keeping in there. What secrets do they hide? What eldritch abominations are they trying to summon? Hmm? I had to think about what to include in a medical journal and realized it's not just about the dry and boring stuff relating to the meat suit your spirit resides in, but also your fears and concerns lifestyle and dietary changes, your mobility equipment, and anything else you use to maintain muscular health, hopes and wishes, advanced care information, emergency information and contact details, allergies, injuries, any medications you're taking, current health issues, and generally things you want to keep in mind before the next visit. A record of, well, you. So I put that in, and I'll show you later how, as a surprise exciting reveal. For now, it's a secret. But since I already have my own, mine is less of a junk journal and more a very badly kept bullet journal. Which you can turn this into too, there's enough pages for you to do that. 
This journal in particular is for one lucky you. I'm giving away this particular one. It has my mark on it and it's awaiting yours. The rules of the giveaway are simple. One, your address must be in Malaysia as I will be paying for the shipping of this journal to you. And two, you must like, comment, and subscribe to the I Tell You YouTube channel and follow the I Tell You Twitch channel. Again, I can't keep this handsome journal because I am a journal and notebook hoarder. I have mountains yet to be used and I am slowly trying to use them all. All. Tangentially, there's probably a few of you wondering why I don't have any background music or ASMR in the video other than my voice. I don't have any background music in this video because I like putting my own playlists when I'm watching crafting videos. You can do the same. Making a junk journal? Totally play Lorna Shore in the background. Just make sure you don't headbang when you're using any sharp instruments or anything that may or may not cause you injury in the headbanging process. This public service announcement is for your personal safety. Smiley face emoji, smiley face emoji, praying hands emoji. I see that there's no music. Surprise! There's always exceptions to the rule. Here's elevator music for 68 seconds. Remember that delightful insert? It's got hard corners, hard and harsh. We want it to be soft and approachable, charming, affable, doesn't stab you with the sharp corners. No paper cuts from this insert, no sir. I attempted to round the corners and make it neat by trying to use my non-existent hand muscles and give up before just positioning it and smashing it into the table because violence solves a lot of things. I also make a pocket lip with a simple mid-cut and fold in. Not taking care to make it centered, to deliberately pull your eye to it. Why do I make this wedge-shaped cut for the insert? To make sure it's accessible. Like how ramps should be everywhere. I did some stuff off camera because this video is as long as our attentions are now short. This particular thing is a closure I made out of spare ribbon and things I pulled off old jewelry that went out of style many, many decades ago. Why do I even have these? Crafting makes you keep random things, okay? Don't judge me. My SMA Diary. You don't have to use this as a diary if you don't want to. Nobody can tell you what to do with your things, and that includes me. If you feel like this junk journal could be put to better use as something else, you can always change the title by slapping on a different sticker to hide it. You do you, boo. I made a little tea lover pocket zone for the first page after the Omni Use Fancy Rounded Corners insert. And the thing I saved as a surprise. I made a sticker pocket out of leftover plastic binders I have and washi tape. Plus, it has all the things I mentioned before for you to arrange wherever you feel like. 
here's a sticker of my orange cat Harley and my brown absolute unit chonker Elo. If you don't like cats, give it to someone who does. The next page is a page of suggestions to what you can have in the book, like your SMA type, age you were diagnosed, or things to ask your doctor too in case you run out of questions, but I'm sure you won't because we are just mountains of questions. And most importantly, for every annual or biannual checkup you do, here are the motor function assessment tools that you can show your doctor so that you can have consistent, repeatable tests to compare year on year. I only utilize the first few pages as a basic intro to the journal. The rest is yours to decorate as you wish. And pockets. There are an absolute metric ton of secret pockets for you to hide things in, like photographs of your spine x-rays. On the last page is the website for SMA Care and a phone number you can contact them at. There it is. That's it. That's the journal. Remember the giveaway rules if you're keen on taking this journal with you, and I hope this was a helpful tutorial to show you how you can make your own too. Thank you so much for watching.